Today let's take a look at a watch from the Ometron Retro Collection. This is the Ridgemont model number 20-5453NVSV. It's called the Ridgemont because it's a tribute to Fast Times at Ridgemont High, a fantastic movie. If you haven't seen it already, I highly recommend it. Doesn't matter what generation you were born in, it's still a great movie. But anyways, let's go ahead and talk about some things about the watch and then finish off with my overall thoughts. So let's get right into it. The Ridgemont goes for $75 MSRP on the Armatron website. However, I easily was able to bring the price down to around $50 off of Google searching promo codes and also discount codes available on the website. For the dimensions, case diameter we're looking at 32.4 millimeters, but if we include the pushers that goes up to 37.9 millimeters. For case thickness or height we're looking at 11.1 millimeters. For lug to lug that's 42.1 millimeters with a lug width of 20 millimeters. And here it is on my seven and a half inch wrist. I consider myself to have a fairly large wrist and I think that it fits fine as far as the dimensions go. So, you know, whether your wrist is large or small, it'll be right at home. From the outside and working our way in, starting off, you can see that we've got a stainless steel case as well as bracelet, and this is throughout the entire body of the watch. For crystal, we've got a mineral crystal, and on the other side, we've got a snap-off case back. All along the outer edge, we've got three pushers and one crown. That crown is used to adjust your analog time. For the buttons, the upper left pusher is going to be your mode button or your mode pusher. Underneath that, the bottom left is your alarm shortcut. So that's how you're gonna see what your alarm is set to. And it's also how you turn on and off your alarm in the main time mode. And then on the other side, as you can see, you've got the crown and on the bottom is your backlight pusher. And the entire case provides 50 meters of water resistance. Let's go ahead and take a look at that backlight. I'm very pleased with the backlight on this watch. Normally with retro style watches, I haven't been very impressed and I think that is commonly accepted knowledge that retro watches just have horrible backlights. Uh, but this one is very modern. They did not keep the one little tiny LED. I don't even think it was an LED, but um, this one is just a, it's a electroluminescent backlight. So very good and very practical. For the dial and the display, simple and clean is the name of the game here. In my opinion, one thing that they did really great back in the 70s and 80s was style, and I feel like the Ridgemont is a perfect representation of that. There's nothing too complex going on here. You've got the clean white lines for your indices, and then your digital display is very bare bones, telling you just what you need to know. As far as the dial goes, I don't think it's a sunburst style. I mean, it's got slight reflective qualities to it, so it does give a very dynamic look in different angles of light, and I very much like that. As far as the digital display goes, it's sharp, it's crisp, easy to read in any angle, so I have no complaints about that. We've got a polished finish on the bezel here, so it's great contrast to the brushed finish along the edge or the side of the case. Um, nothing too crazy here. It doesn't really offer too much protection. I think it is just a cosmetic look, but I've got no complaints there. For the style, I think it is perfect for what it is. For 
for the pushers and the crown. Everything here feels solid. I mean, obviously it's not gonna be built like a tank, but for what it is, it's just fine. The pushers provide just enough resistance so it feels solid, but they're easy enough to press and very comfortable to use. As far as the crown goes, it's just a push-pull crown and it does exactly what it needs to do, which is to adjust the analog time very easily. For the bracelet, as is common with every other retro style watch, it's nothing to write home about. The materials are your very standard, basic folded steel links. However, with that being said, I believe that the Armatron Retro collection of watches probably have one of the better bracelets that you can find on the market. It just feels a little bit more solid than what you're going to get with Casio or Timex um, in regards to their retro collection. Um, and that's just based on weight. It just feels a little bit heftier, so that attributes to that overall feeling of higher quality. You've got the standard quick adjust clasp there, um, very easy to do on your own and to get the perfect size fit. I will say that if your wrist is any larger than seven and a half inches, then this probably is not the watch for you because as you can see, I've got the clasp pretty much set to as large of a size as you can get it and I've got a seven and a half inch wrist. So just something to consider. For the case back, I think it's absolutely beautiful. You know, again, it's not gonna be like a tank, but that's not what this watch is supposed to be. But what we've got is a very beautifully polished and finished case back that looks good when you're looking at it and it's not uncomfortable when you're wearing it. And really, what more can you ask for from a watch of this caliber? So I've got no complaints with the case back. I'm very happy with it. Overall finishing is very good. I do like a brushed finish and that is the case with the majority of this watch. The polished finish is really just on that bezel so it gives it a touch of elegance but the rest of it is great for just everyday wear. But it'll still look good in a suit and it'll look good in a white shirt and jeans. So it's a very versatile watch to wear in any kind of environment. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I really think that Armatron is an underdog watch company that we should be paying more attention to. For the most part, a lot of their watches in their catalog are on the cheaper end. They're still great quality, but they are cheap watches. But every once in a while, they come out with watches that are just absolutely killer watches. And I think the Ridgemont is one of them. This Annie Digi watch style has been done countless times, but I feel like they did a great execution of this style. When it comes to the Ridgemont, I think there are two stars of the show here. Number one is the case material, the fact that they went with a full metal case as well as the stainless steel bracelet. It really gives it a level of quality that is on a higher level when you compare it to other watches that share the same style. The second star of the show would be the backlight. Normally with retro watches, for some reason, every brand wants to stick with that one shitty orange backlight that doesn't illuminate anything. But in this case, Armatron decided to stick with the genius idea of putting a modern day electroluminescent backlight. And it's so practical, so you really get the best of both worlds. You get the beautiful style of a retro watch and the modern luxury of a decent backlight. As far as the negatives go, there's really not much because I knew exactly what I was walking into, so I wasn't surprised with anything. But if I had to change something, it would definitely be the snap-off case back. I really like it. I like the way that it looks and it's got a great finish to it. But for me, I just am not a fan of snap-off case backs. But that doesn't affect the functionality of the watch. You know, that's just a nitpicky thing that I'm thinking of to uh, come up with a negative for the watch. I think the important thing is to keep your expectations realistic. 
So this is not an outdoor rugged tool watch, but you know, it's just a fun retro style watch uh, that looks good on really any person in any environment. So whether you're going out on a date or you're just hanging out with the guys, you know, you name it, it'll look just fine on your wrist. So do I recommend the Ridgemont? Absolutely yes. It's a budget friendly watch that looks good and feels good and there's really not much more that you can ask for. So that's all I got to say. I hope that you enjoyed this watch review and I, I hope it helps you with your next watch purchase. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys later. Bye.